Hello everyone, welcome to Reactive Labs. Today we will talk about monoliths and microservices and the difference between them. So let's write it down. Monolithic and microservices architecture. Hmm. Okay. So what are monoliths? What are microservices? And what should we use? Should we prefer one over the other? Is one better than other? Um, is one worse than other? Do we have a mm, fixed call that, okay, we should use one, obviously, and we should discard the other? Definitely not, right? Everything has its pros and cons. Everything is good for some time and not for some other time. So, yeah, keeping that in mind, Let's start with their definitions, their use cases, where each is good. And by the end of the lecture, we will know whether to prefer microservice or monolith for our project. Okay. So let's start by the technical definition for monoliths. Actually, it should be black ink or blue ink. Is it fine? So, monolithic architecture. It is a unified application structure. A unified application structure where All components are interconnected and deployed as a single unit. Okay. So this is monolithic architecture. In this, there is a single application. Okay. There is a single application in which all components are interconnected. Different components are there. All are interconnected and they are all deployed as a single unit. Okay. Uh, I know the definition would not have helped very much, but I'll, I'll give an example later. Let's hear the definition of microservices now. Microservices architecture. So what is this? It is a modular approach. It is a modular approach where applications are broken down. They are broken down into smaller and independent services. independent services as you see the services are interconnected in monolithic architecture but here they are independent okay sorry independent okay let's let's give an example let's let's see the example um, for example let's take the example of an amazon app amazon shopping app okay it has different types of services okay one is a search service so when you search for an item what item should be displayed to you uh, what mixing relevant item should be displayed to you what results to be returned in which order the results have to be returned so these things are taken care by the search team okay or you can say search service okay one second when you add an item to the cart okay so there is something called cart okay that is also taken care by some other service so this is other service when you make a payment so 
so that is taken care by payment service okay when you make a return that is taken care by return service so obviously there are different services there are different teams which specialize in holding each service in uh, managing each service okay because we we just do the searching right we search for a product we get it but we do not know what goes on behind the scenes there are, there are a lot of things going on behind the scenes there are very big teams behind each service so we can understand from that only how complex the search functionality is similar to the search payment and return everything is complex okay we need different teams which specialize in each domain okay what if it is possible that for searching we may need something called let's say elastic search okay or uh, when we do database searching we may need free text search for this let's say the team specializes in or they know that uh, maybe java is good okay or actually uh, since it's a search maybe it is possible that when uh, we need to do recommendations also it is possible that python is good i'm just taking an example python is good for cart let's say the team specializes in java java is good for payment service let's say um, again python is good okay for return service maybe let's say they think that okay rust is good okay let's take an example of go go is good okay all these interact with each other through the use of apis so the apis allow them to be flexible because all they have to use is the result of each service whatever this search service does and when someone presses the add to cart whatever object is added to the cart only then that has to be handled by the cart cart should not know how the search service processed these requests what language was used no because it has the information if we have an information that somebody added let's say a samsung tablet let's say somebody added a samsung tablet to the cart then it's just a samsung tablet it it has the same properties in whatever language you choose it has the same property in c++ it has the same property in java it has the same property in hindi english tamil every language right so only cart service is responsible for cart service only responsible for knowing what the object is independent of language right similarly when cart is ready and checkout is ready person is ready to check out the payment service should only know what the amount was how much amount should be charged okay it should not worry about again what language was used while adding the um, uh, that item to the cart right so that's why this is independent when somebody somebody has to return something they would not check that okay oh no you ordered something in go language i cannot return it because my language is rust they will not tell you that right they only know that okay you have to return you will get the return the amount will be returned your um, uh, the item will be returned your amount will be refunded that's it so that is the beneficial or the good thing about microservices so we have different microservices and they all can be used independently they all may have their own independent languages and independent technologies they can use they can choose their own tech stack but the problem with this if all of these had to be a monolith then these would be tightly coupled and and the language had to be same everything must be written in the same language and everything must be dependent on totally dependent on each other okay because obviously it is possible that if the search is using the same thing search has to provide same thing to the cart then if the language incompatibility is there then it is possible that there may be some errors okay but does this mean that microservices is always better no this was just an example now i'll tell you more about monoliths and microservices and by the end of the video you will be able to know when to use what okay so let's talk about monoliths more so we have monoliths what are the characteristics of monoliths it is a single tiered application structure it is a single tiered application okay next is it has tight coupling as i told you in microservices you have the freedom to choose but here there is tight coupling one thing is dependent on other and it is deployed as a single unit
its deployment as single unit okay then what are the advantages the advantage is the simplicity in development and deployment simplicity in development sorry simplicity in development and deployment and since it has a single code base it is easier to manage easier to manage with single code base because if we have different code base and different uh, components of the system sometimes when error comes we don't get to know uh, where the error is actually happening so the error keeps on traveling from teams to teams that one team will say okay this is the error of the search team search team will say no this is from the card team different things can happen right so that is not the case here there is a single team and they have to solve it okay then what are the challenges the challenges are scalability is limited limited scalability why due to the need to replicate entire application because we have to replicate the entire application okay so we may need to do something like okay these requests will go to this monolith other requests will go to this monolith like this so that's why the scalability is limited and also difficulty in adopting new technologies independently difficulty in adopting new technologies independently why i am saying this let's let me give you the best example so amazon started in i think 1994 probably 94 95 something somewhere then at that time when somebody would have searched something they would have used a database query and in database query you need to have exact match okay but later when uh, this machine learning natural language processing everything evolved elastic search when these came up later it is possible that this search initially if it was written in let's say maybe java and they had to do something like not search sorry actually when they had to the entire amazon app if there was it was written in java now they had to modify this search functionality why because they now know that okay there are nlp techniques which can help make search better there are uh, matching algorithms there are algorithms like edit distance there are algorithms like uh, technologies like elastic search so now they got to know that okay these things are there and they also found out that uh, with time python's libraries python python got too many libraries which could do everything right mm. which could do these uh, searches quickly so they did not have to reinvent the wheel so they could easily just change the code base for search maybe from initially from java to maybe do it in python okay they could quickly modify it they could independently scale the search independently modify the search so this was the benefit of uh, using microservice which was not possible in monoliths because obviously they will have to change the entire code base from the scratch right they have to write it again in a different language so the good thing here would be if they had microservices because obviously an uh, application at such scale they will have uh, different things working and different technologies evolving so they might need to adapt from changing time to time so this is where the monoliths face challenges in adopting new technologies okay great next similar things for microservices let's see what are the challenges and everything so what are its characteristics so for microservices characteristics include modular structure with independent services modular structure with 
independent services as i talked about search card payment everything is independent next is decoupled components decoupled components what they do they allow for separate deployments allowing separate deployments you can deploy a search without waiting for what's happening in the cart right obviously version compatibility and contract should be same but that's a different topic what are the advantages scalability obviously scalability why because we can scale individual components scale individual components and independent deployment independent deployment and technology stack choice we can choose technology for each service technology stack choice for each service and what are the challenges increased complexity because monoliths are simpler these are complex because obviously you have to handle all the communication that happens between these uh, different components increased complexity in managing distributed systems because systems are distributed there are a lot of network calls to be made so this will be difficult and potential communication overhead potential communication overhead how between services because the apis need to make calls right uh, so the communication over the network will be dependent on the network right uh, in monoliths everything is in the same system so they may ne not need to do network calls for communication amongst each other okay so now that we know these things we can say what are the key differences what are the key differences we observed between monoliths and microservices one is scalability monolith scale by replicating the entire application okay monoliths have to replicate entire application replicate entire application which is inefficient obviously but microservices microservices scale individual components so if we see in terms of scalability microservices will next comes deployment it is deployed as a single unit monoliths monoliths single unit deployment whereas for microservices it is independent deployments independent deployments so you might ask which one is good i would say this is good if the application is very large has to handle too many loads but it is good if the application is small and uh, we don't need too much of maintenance overhead okay um next is maintenance obviously mm so what happens is in terms of monoliths if there is any update okay updates impact entire system entire system one update may collapse everything it is possible but in uh, microservices maintenance is easier easier maintenance 
so if search so search functionality was updated and there is a bug only the search will be impacted it will have no impact on the payment and card systems right next comes tech stack technology stack it will have a uniform tech stack and this will have choices independently so again it is also dependent you i may not give a clear winner here because it depends because if your app is very small it, ha it has a few thousand users you may not want different tax tech stacks because you will hardly have 10 or 15 people team i think that is also too much but it's good if all of them work on the same tech stack right but if the application is very huge and different components may have different uh, technologies which work better for them then obviously this is good okay so just one more thing which we we already know everything actually i should not tell this but i am telling it anyway advantages and disadvantages so for monoliths and microservices advantages disadvantages so what are the advantages of monoliths simplicity in development and deployment simplicity in development and deployment and what are the advantages of microservices scalability independent deployments and technology diversity and what are the disadvantages of monoliths what are the advantages of microservices are the disadvantages of monoliths scalability limitations scalability limitations challenges in maintenance and updates challenges in maintenance and updates and what are the disadvantages of microservices increased complexity increased complexity and potential communication overhead potential communication overhead okay so i hope this clears everything about monoliths and microservices and now you know not one is better than other it's about our choices depending on the kind of system that we are making you will have to make a call so i hope this clears everything if you like the video please give me a thumbs up and thank you for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. I will see you in the next one.